Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> what a great God. Amen. What a great gospel. And uh, what, a, what a great Savior we have this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God that we have uh, celebrated the Lord's table. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> you know, as I was uh, taking that uh, uh, this morning, I was uh, reminded of my grandmother. You know, my grandmother was a very traditional woman, and uh, in her tradition, they used to wear a veil all the time. You know, so when uh, son-in-law or somebody would come to the house, she would put the veil on, on her head, like, you know, as a mark of respect. Amen. She was uneducated, but every now and again, you see a knot at the end of the veil. He said, uh, many times I asked grandmother, what was that all about? He said, somebody had given a message, or I owe somebody some money. Amen. So at the end of the day, when I, op when I see the knot, then it will remind me. Amen. What was that all about? Amen. Well, we have celebrated the Lord's table today. It reminds us, amen, what the Lord God has done for us. Hallelujah. Amen. The price that he had to pay, amen, for our redemption, for our salvation this morning. Praise God. Well, it's a privilege and an honor for me to be here, amen, among you. Amen. Thank you. You know, I call him now my dear brother, Patrick, amen, for the friendship that uh, God has established between us, amen, and we are lovely folks over here, you know, I appreciate you, amen, and thank you so much for praying for me, amen, and my family, amen, God is good, hallelujah, praise God. Well, this morning, <clears throat> I'm just here before you that uh, I would be able to just bring you a cup of cold water, amen, just to pour water in your hands, uh, that through the ministry of the word of God, amen, the church would be strengthened over here, edified, amen, and glorified this morning. Praise God, amen, hallelujah. You know, I know many of you have been going through some uh, trials, amen, some difficulties, amen, challenges in your life certain times, you know, it's just very, very hard to bear, amen. You know, I have gone through my share of trials, amen. You know, all that sometimes you want to do is just to curl around in the corner like a ball, amen, and just stay there, amen. You know, but this morning, I want to speak to us about uh, trusting God in times of trial. Trusting God in times of trial, amen. Beloved, when trials come, when challenges come, they don't come normally, you know, with a big advertisement uh, on a limbric post uh, or, or the carry post, I would say. You know, I'm coming to your home in the morning. You know, they come uh, suddenly knocking at your door. But in that hour of crisis, uh, what do you do? Where do you turn to or where do you run to? Amen. Praise God. But we thank God today, beloved, that we have uh, our strength in God. Praise God. We know that Jesus Christ uh, is our hiding place. Amen. He is our refuge. Uh, praise God Almighty. Amen. Well, this morning, um, I want to, uh, we weren't going to look at uh, a life of one man in the Bible. His name uh, is Daniel. Amen. <clears throat> You see, Daniel, you know, he was a young boy. He was taken into captivity, amen, and then uh, he, ha he has grown uh, 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 to be an older man, amen. He has got white beard now and gray hair, amen, and uh, what has happened now, he's about to face uh, the biggest trial and the biggest challenge of his life. You know, God is about to promote uh, this man, uh, but his enemies came uh, and they wanted to conspire against him. So what did they do? They spoke lies about uh, this man, uh, you know, and they say, Mr. Daniel, tomorrow 
you're going to be thrown uh, into the lion's den. Now, them lions have not been fed for a long time now. Amen. And, and what are you going to do when you're going to be the thought of even to be thrown uh, into those hungry lions? Amen. Now, I have never seen a lion, amen. I only got bit by a dog, you know, when I was young, amen. And it's a horrible, horrible feeling. And now, here is this man. What does he do when he's faced with the greatest crisis of his life that he's going to die in the morning? You know, the Bible says now in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. Now his windows were open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. And he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. And he prayed and he gave thanks to God as he did always. Praise God. Hallelujah. As he did all the time. Praise God. You see, beloved, there is something tremendously impressive about this man who is attacked from every side you know you know he is overwhelmed yet maintain a quite dignified persistence of faith and goes on with his god he's unmoved amen praise god he stands firm you know he's unaffected by the circumstances around him amen he goes without discouragement and setbacks amen you see that daniel's troubles began because he was marked out for advancement praise god god has laid his hand upon his precious servant amen you see what happened beloved every plan of the enemy failed you see but the servant of the lord advanced and achieved for what he was marked out for Praise God. You know, hallelujah. You know, what does the Bible say in Isaiah 54? That there is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah to God. You know, beloved, this morning I just want to remind you that you are covered by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. You know, the precious blood of the Lamb has covered you. Amen. There is no power, no authority in the, in, in, in the devil or in the pit of hell that can destroy you. Praise God. You are protected and you are kept by the mighty hand of God. You are protected by that mighty blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You, you know my background. I, uh, you know, we were so involved into witchcraft and all of those things. Uh, when I got saved, uh, you know, we used to worship idols. Uh, but outside of the house, uh, we used to have a shrine. Amen. That's where we used to sacrifice, uh, you know, all those, uh, you know, animals to the witchcraft. We, we, evil spirits and all of those things. So my father, out of badness, what he did, uh, he brought the shrine. And he put it right beside my bed so that this devil should convince me to go back to the old ways. Amen. Well, pray, he thought that, 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 that those things will bring me back. Amen. But praise be to God Almighty. Amen. None of those things could hinder me. None of those things could harm me. Amen. You know why? Because I was covered by the blood. I am covered by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. My cousins, uh, their pastors from Australia, when they visited my house, uh, they wouldn't go into my room, you know, afraid because something would happen to them. Amen. Hallelujah to God. As I say, amen. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift uh, a standard against you. Amen. You know, the Bible says in First John, Chapter 3 and verse 8. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the evil one. Amen. Praise God today. Hallelujah. We are seated with Christ in heaven. Hallelujah. The enemy is defeated and he is under his feet. Praise God. Amen. Beloved, I want to let you know this morning. If you're going through some trial, 
If you're going through some attack because you are marked out for advancement, amen, God has laid his hands upon you and the devil does not like it, amen. You see, when, when, when I, the moment I arrived in Cork, I'm telling you, you know, people just came and conspired against me. I did nothing wrong. Amen. You see, growing up in the islands, uh, I did not know that God had put his hands upon me. You know, when I was a young man, we, we, we had a meeting, a men's meeting, amen. We slept in a hut. Amen. And, uh, you know, it was very tight. We just, we just slept all together. You know, senior pastors and everybody were there in a tiny, tiny island. And in the morning, there was a missionary that he was speaking. And he said, uh, he said, if anybody wants to make their full commitment to Christ, they're going to serve God out of their whole life. Amen. Would you come forward now? And I remember walking there. You know, that day I felt the hand of God. I felt as if I was married to Christ that morning. Pastor Dorothy, you would understand when you make that kind of commitment, nothing else satisfies you. People have come and say, oh, Jay, you go do this, you do that. But I'm telling you, you know when God puts his hands upon you. And he took a young boy out of the islands of the Pacific, amen. And he took me all over the world to preach this gospel. Amen. I know the hand of God was upon me. And from that day since, amen, I have suffered nothing but trials after trials. Amen. I was preaching somewhere last week in the... And somebody said, you know, you, know you, you, you delivered a good message. I said, yes, sir. But it took 30 years in the making, amen. 30 years, amen, when God was dealing with a man, when he was preparing a man. You know, sometimes you go, you speak, oh, it's good, you know, pastor, you bless my heart. But when you look behind that man, there is a times of trial. There's a times of loneliness, isolation, and heartaches, and pain, and, and trials, and turmoil. You know, when God put his hands upon, upon you, amen. You know, you see, Daniel went into the lines, then he came out victorious, amen. You see, the way to the throne for Jesus uh, was the way through the cross, amen. You know, beloved, there is no shortcut in the kingdom of God, amen. You know, if you suffer with him, you will also reign with him, amen. So what was the key, you know, that kept this man unmoved in the difficult times uh, and difficult situation? You know, the answer is, uh, as he did uh, always, amen. When the writing was signed against him, he did not run here and there. He did not go seeking for influence. He did not go to the synagogue to, to, to get religious approval. Where did he go? He went into his house. Amen. His windows were open towards Jerusalem. You know, he kneeled upon his knees and gave thanks to God. Hallelujah. You know, in the midst of that crisis, amen, we would be panicking. We had coronavirus. Everybody was running around like headless chicken, do not know what to do. But here is this man, the greatest crisis of his life. He goes to God because you know why? He knows his God. Hallelujah. He reads his Bible every day. Amen. He sees in the presence of God. He's seeking the face of God every day. 
He has a relationship with God. He knows who his God is. Amen. He has heard about the story how God parted the Red Sea and delivered the children of Israel. He heard how, the, how, he, how he kicked the wall of Jer Jericho and fall down. How he gave victory after victory to the children of Israel. You know, he says, I serve a great and a mighty God. Praise God. Hallelujah. My God is able. Hallelujah. My God is able. Hallelujah. Amen. My God is able. You know, beloved, when he, you know, you know those people who were thrown into, they threw him into the lion's den. Next day they were thrown back in, amen, and they never came out. Praise God. Daniel came out, beloved, not by any of his self-effort, not by any of his planning, by simply maintaining his position of faith in God. That my God is going to do it, amen. Hallelujah. Remember, beloved, if you're going through some difficulties right now, if you're going through your trials right now, you may be true. You feel that you're in a lion's den. Hold on to God. Hallelujah. He's going to bring you out on the other side. Praise God. He's going to bring you out uh, on the other side. Amen. You know, some lion's dens uh, are bigger. Some of them are smaller. You know, you know, sometimes one doesn't go away. The other is standing at the door. You know, but I'm telling you, beloved, hold on to the Lord. Our God uh, will deliver. Amen. You know, we overcome our challenges not by our physical strength or human wisdom, but simply on spiritual grounds. Amen. You know, this must be our heart cry. Amen. God, you have to do it now. God, if you don't do it, oh God, it's not going to happen. Lord, if you don't touch my family, it's nothing is going to happen. God, if you don't touch my sick body, oh God, nothing is going to happen. God, if you don't bring my child back from drug abuse or whatever it may be, amen, nothing is going to happen. Praise God. God, you have to do it. My total and utter dependency is upon you, God. Hallelujah. All these things I have learned as a minister of the gospel for years, don't fight your battles. Let God fight your battles for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God. You know, the word of God says, beloved, that he is mighty in battle. Hallelujah. He knows what to do. Praise God. And he's not going to abandon you. And he's not going to forsake you. He's standing by your side. Amen. You see, Daniel's wisdom, his experience, his influence among men counted for nothing. You know, when you are thrown into the lion's den, what you're going to show to them hungry lions? Your good standing in society? Your deeds to your luxury house? Oh, your, oh, your deeds to your car. He said, oh, look at this now. Oh, devil. Amen. Or oh, 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 lions. You know, they don't understand that. Amen. What you going to do when your marriage is falling apart? When your house is in a shambles. Beloved, it is time now to do what Daniel did. Amen. To come into the presence of God and stay there until you are saturated uh, Hallelujah. <clears throat> you see, beloved, when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, it was a picture of complete helplessness. Amen. Have you felt helpless recently? Amen. You know, here is a picture of that amazing grace of God. Hallelujah. When we are so lost in our sin and our trespasses, amen. It was the hand of God that, that pulled you out uh, from the very gates of hell. It is God who rescued you, amen. Hallelujah. It is by grace uh, we have been saved, amen. There is nothing that we could do or contribute to our salvation. It is an utter mercy in the grace of God. Hallelujah. If God brought you out during those times, will he not bring you out now? 
Amen. Many times when we are helpless, amen. Hallelujah, it is God. He was steadfast in his faith to God. You know, the key to his triumph was, as he did always, amen. Hallelujah. He knew that his God is able. Praise God. You know, this man, you know, God had called him, amen. And he had given his whole life for the fulfillment of that. Amen. It is all or nothing. Praise God. It is all or nothing. Beloved, we cannot serve God out of our convenience. Amen. We cannot only read our Bible when it only suits us. And when we have problems, you know, we go through the pages uh, trying to look for some, for some answers in that. But, you know, you know it's our conscious, consistency of work that we need with God. Praise God. Three times a day, he came and he sought the face of God. What a dedication and what a devotion this man had. Amen. Morning, noon, and night, he was there in the presence of God, waiting. He did not come to God with a big shopping list and say, Oh, God, give me that, give me that. You know, give me a new house, amen. You know, give me a new car. No, sir. You know, he came and he worshiped God. Hallelujah. He felt upon his knees and acknowledged the God Almighty, the creator of the, and the maker of the universe. Amen. He worshipped him. He loved him. And he gave thanks to God. Beloved, our Christian life, you know, is a life of devotion. It is a life of communion. And it is a life of fellowship with God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you know, he came in the every day and he, and he, and he, and he opened his windows were constantly open towards Jerusalem because he knew that's where the presence and the glory of God was. Amen. You know, you know, and an amazing thing was that nobody was able, uh, was, was able to make him close his windows. Amen. Nobody was able to make his, him close his windows, amen. You know, many times, you know, little, little things. We, we, you know, we don't come to the prayer meetings. We can't come to the church, amen. We close our windows so easily, amen. Somebody offends us, we close our windows, amen. You know, I, I, I see so many people, they've left the church, they've left their faith, and they're backslidden, you know, because they say, oh, somebody hurt me. If you have a relationship with God, yes, if somebody hurt you, move away from there, but don't leave the fellowship with the Lord. Amen. And that's what he did. Nobody could make him shut his window. Amen. Every day. Hallelujah. He had a holy habit uh, and spiritual rock routine. When trouble came and knocked at the door of Daniel, what did he do? He just continued with God. Hallelujah. You know, walking with God as if nothing has happened to him. Because he knew his God. He knew he, who he was. Amen. Hallelujah. He did not go running here to there. You know, he just ran into the arms of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, that's where, you know, he found his comfort, his peace, and his rest in God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, why was that, you know, that kept him on his knees? What was that? Amen. The reason was, uh, you, know, da you know, Daniel the reason why Daniel, he proceeded so calmly, amen, you know, because of the largeness of the vision that he had, amen. It was not about Daniel. It was not about his circumstances, nor about his ministry. It was about the fulfillment of the purposes of God, amen. Like Daniel, God has called us for something bigger and something greater. We are called to be part of the divine purpose of God. You know, God has not just saved you, beloved. 
just to come here, you know, on Sunday morning, worship God and hear, you know, your pastor preach, amen, you know, and come to meetings here and there. No, it's beyond that. You're part of the divine purpose of God. God has laid his hands upon you. You are special, beloved, and you are important in the house of God. Hallelujah. You are special. Nobody is a, a God does not have a wastebasket. Amen. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make Anne Fitzgerald. Oh, no, I don't like her. I'm going to throw it in the wastebasket. No, whoever God has made you, you are important and, and needed in the house of God. You are part of a great and a mighty purpose of God in these last days. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, he looked forward. He gave thanks. Amen. Men of faith and men of vision give, give praise to God. You know, what lies in their future. Amen. He had a deep conviction. Amen. And nothing could prevent him from fulfilling that purpose of God. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, beloved, we have been made associate, you know, with that, with that great eternal purpose and a plan of God. He was faithful, amen. You know, the man who remains true to the God-given vision can afford to lose, to leave his own fate into the hands of God. We do not know what's coming ahead. I do not know. What's coming ahead? Amen. But we can leave our life in the hands of the Lord. Beloved, he's holding your hand. Amen. And he's going to lead you. Praise God. He has given his Holy Spirit to you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. To Daniel, you know, his God was the greatest of all. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you know, you know, it wasn't just a prayer room. It was an audience with God. Amen. When he came before God, he stood before the throne of God Almighty. Praise God. Before the very throne of God Almighty. He worshipped God, the same God that the 24 elders, they come and they bow before him. The same God who the four living beings come and worship him. He came before the same God. Before him, multitudes and multitudes of angels come and bow down and worship. You know, when we come to the prayer meeting, beloved, we just don't come willy-nilly just like that. Amen. We are coming before the very throne of God. Hallelujah. Before we are coming into the heavenly, you know, you know, the throne room of God. It's just between you and God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. You know, to him, God was the greatest of all. Amen. You see, Daniel stood on positive ground. Little, little things did not bother him. You know how we see recently, we have come into the culture called offensive culture. We are offended by everything. Amen. Even in church, people are just so offended now. We can't say anything to anybody right now. People are just on the edge right now. Oh man, you just touch them a little, they, they explode, amen. But you see, little, little things did not bother him because he knew that his was life was more than this, amen. You know, he did not go around chasing the negatives, amen. He continued, you know, straight on with his devotion to his God, amen. He had set his priority right before God and nobody could deter him from that, amen. You know, beloved, Satan will always come. He'll always come, want to divert you from what God has called you, amen, from fulfilling the purpose of God. But the man of the Spirit refuses to be diverted. He's determined to go on, amen. He went straight on with his God, amen. He could not have overcome what he faced, beloved, if he did not have a constant walk with God. Amen. Falling madly in love with the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Falling madly in love with the Lord. I pray that God would give us that kind of love that Daniel had, amen, that falling madly in love with the Lord, amen. You know, remember your first puppy love that you had. Oh, man, you think that is the best thing that would happen to you, amen. You know, I used to walk, uh, you know, miles and miles, amen, just to get a glimpse, uh, amen, amen. But you see, beloved, that kind of devotion and dedication God wants, amen. A life of commitment, a life of devotion, and a life of prayer, amen. But here is the most important one. You know, Daniel had learned a complete confidence in God's ability to answer a prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing could deter him from waiting upon God, for he knew the power of prayer. You know, there is more power, beloved, in a simple prayer of faith than the greatest army that has ever marched. Amen. Hallelujah. Daniel sought no other answer. He sought no other cure, but he went to his God as he did always. Amen. You know, he went straight back on his knees and find a place, found a place of spiritual authority over it amen you know he you know he dealt with everything in that place of prayer beloved our own power will fail us our own wisdom will fail us our own strength will fail us but listen to me this morning a man who is on his knees is in touch with the throne of god almighty amen daniel did not pray because he was faced with the trial he prayed because he was a praying man. Amen. He prayed because he believed in the power of prayer and practiced what he believed. Amen. You see, nowadays, many prophets who are running around here and there giving a word. Amen. But that man or woman is no prophet until that man or woman is a, wo is a person of prayer. Amen. He set his heart three times a day. Only in the place of prayer that he was not been able to move by the devil. Amen. He went to the throne. You know, he was promoted later through the way of the lion's den. You see, our Savior went to the throne by the way of the cross. Amen. If you serve God, if you want the purposes of God, to be fulfilled in your life. Amen. Then what you're going through that. You know God will have to take you through. Your own lion's dance. You know he's going to have to take you through. Own challenges and trials. You know sometimes beloved. They're just unbearable. They're just too much. Amen. I wish I could share more on that. Amen. But recently God has just brought me to a place of absolute brokenness, amen. I just don't want to go and just preach a message for the sake of it, Pastor. You know, I want to bring the heart of God. I want to stir the heart of God, amen. He will take you through the lion's dance, amen. But you will come out on the other side. Praise God. You know the three Hebrew boys, Daniel's friends, when they're thrown into the, you know, the furnace of fire, he did seven times more. He was in the fire with them. Praise God. Maybe you're thinking of giving up recently, feeling absolutely helpless and hopeless. Amen. Beloved, don't give up. Amen. He is holding your hand and he's going to take you through the other side. Maybe you're going through a wilderness experience, amen. You're thinking that you're going to die here in the desert. You know, I felt that thing for, for not weeks and months, but years at a time. You're saying there is no hope, you know, no way of escape. But I'm telling you, he's holding your hands as that old song goes. <coughs> you know, he knows the way through the wilderness. The, the important thing is, beloved, 
that we fall madly in love with him. How do we do it? Amen. By coming to him every day. Amen. Just being with him. Spending time with him. I'm not talking about, you know, just coming, you know, with all the needs. Yes, yes, God answers. But he just wants you just to be with him alone. Amen. You know, and, and I pray this morning, God, would you come and saturate us all in your very presence, oh God. Immerse us, oh God, in your presence, oh God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know when, 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 you know, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, when, you know, when King David, you know, had lost everything, his wife and, and his old town was burnt. You know, what did he do in that hour of crisis? He says to Abitha, the priest, he said, he said, bring me an ephod, Abitha, that I may go and wait on the Lord. That I may go and seek the face of God. You know, when, when, uh, when Mo, uh, you know, Moabites and the Ammonites came for the fight against Israel, he said, we don't have any, you know, any of the, 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 the big artilleries to match them, oh God. But our eyes are upon you, oh God, amen. You know, it's time now that we know our God. That will carry us through this hour of trial and hour of crisis, Amen. You remember Moses when God had called him, amen. You know, he heard the voice of God. He, he took his donkey and he was going towards, uh, towards Egypt, amen. And the enemy whispered in his ears, he said, he said, Moses, don't go there. When the Egyptians find you out, they're going to kill you. But Moses, amen, knew his God, amen. Who his God was, he never turned his mule the other way, amen. And we carried went continually towards the towards towards uh, towards Egypt amen remember job in the bible when he had lost everything his children are gone his possession are gone his livestock everything is gone and his wife comes to him he said dear curse your god and die amen i could picture this old man you know, getting up from this airship, amen. You know, you know, rubbing off his ass uh, from this, from his sores, amen. Looking at, uh, looking at in the eyeball of his wife. He said, "Darling, I want to tell you something. Everything is gone. My possession is gone. My children is gone. But one thing I want to say to you: that my redeemer, he lives. Hallelujah to God." Who could say these things? The man who knows his God. That he's not going to fail you ever. Hallelujah. Remember Paul and Silas when they were thrown into the, in, into the cell. Amen. The wounds were so deep that you could see them white bones. Amen. They, they, were, they were chained right into the bottom danger, uh, dungeon. Amen. And the enemy comes to him and said, Paul, when they're going to see See, amen. When they're going to smell your rotting carcasses, then they're going to come and take you out. Amen. I remember this man of God sitting there in that old, wet, cold dungeon, giving an elbow, you know, to Silas. He said, Silas, give me a C. I want to praise God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. It's one thing to sing here in the church, beloved. It's one thing to sing when, uh, when everything is falling apart. Amen. You can only sing in the hour of trial when you know your God. Hallelujah. If you don't know him, you cannot sing to him. Praise God almighty. Amen. Whatever the trial you go through, he's not going to take the trial, but he's going to take you through it. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the power. You know why? Because God has laid his hands upon you this morning. Hallelujah. 
find encouragement and comfort in these words this morning. Amen. Our God is a mighty God. He's mighty in battle and he's going to fight for you. Hallelujah. He's the El Shaddai, the almighty God, the all-powerful God. And he says to us this morning, because I live, you shall live also. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Let us all stand to our feet uh, this morning, amen, and let us worship God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let us worship God. Oh, let us love God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Beloved, maybe along the line somewhere, you may have lost your devotion. You lost your communion with God. It is time now that we, amen, return to that old path. Amen. Seeking God. <coughs> loving God. That we fall in love madly with him so much that these little, little things does not bother us anymore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your God is great. Your God is mighty. Your God is powerful. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't be discouraged, beloved, when you're going through the lion's den of sickness in your body, problem in your marriage, problem with your children, problem in your workplace, whatever lion's den you're going through. Hallelujah. He is going to shut the mouth of those lions. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Imagine that night when Daniel was put in there because he knew his God. Them lions were hungry. You know, I can, I can just picture. This is just my picture. Amen. He laying on top of one belly of one lion. God had filled their bellies with that heavenly manna. They don't want to eat no more. And Daniel was snoring there. And so were the lions. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, there is victory in the name amen. of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's love God. Say, God, I want to love you like Daniel loved you, oh God. Not out of convenience, oh God, but out of a life of devotion and communion to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Let's worship God. Let's love God. 